Yeah. Okay, so as Merdat said, my name is Philip Costa. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Minho. I also, uh, I'm also a member of the Center of Molecular and Environmental Biology. And uh, I'm a marine biologist by training. My focus has been on marine life. Regarding barcoding, my main focus has been fish and crustacea, but also I have people in my group working also with annelida, mollusca, and other uh, big taxa within marine life. Uh, my, our focus is in marine areas, uh, in Portuguese marine areas, including the Azores and Madeira. And um, uh, we just applied for extension of our marine land uh, area for the United Nations. And if this uh, becomes uh, effective, then we will have uh, an area equivalent to continental Europe. So it's going to be a, a huge area, really. Um, so I've, I've also been involved in uh, some uh, European level meta studies. My barcode involvement has been since 2003, very early. I was uh, serving as a delegate for Portugal in IBOL phase one. Then I shared the second European barcoding uh, conference, and I have a number of involvement uh, uh, in many other ways. Um, you will find these uh, numbers uh, rather modest, and uh, uh, I suspect the reason for that is that uh, we are focused mostly on marine life and you cannot use Malay straps for marine life uh, collections. Okay, so I'll, I'll move forward and I will show you that we are now going to uh, start working out with, uh, with insects and we have some uh, nice numbers on those as well. They are not on board yet. So um, we, have, uh, we don't have a, a truly a, a network in Portugal. Uh, we don't have funding available for networks, so we have been working mostly using dispersed individual grants. We have a marine life network effective since 2008, and there's a number of national institutions involved, like the Museum of Natural History, the National Fisheries Agency, very important, and a number of universities and research centers, mostly related with marine life. Uh, our goal will be now to uh, extend to uh, all other realms of life, so to include uh, terrestrial organisms, all organisms, and uh, we have uh, good expectations because we have new contributors that are uh, uh, engaged in this, uh, uh, in this taxa. Uh, regarding our project, this is really a collection of projects that I led, and these were the projects that enabled us to start with the uh, network for marine life. Um, <clears throat> they involve a number of institutions in Portugal, and they had also the important support here from, the, from Bayou and also from Bangor University. Altogether, they look, this looks like a very a big number, uh, but we have to think, consider that this includes 20% overheads, salaries, and field work. So, altogether, we don't have that much left for sequencing. Uh, our, uh, these projects were about marine fish and invertebrates, reference libraries, and also metabarcoding of uh, estuarine macrobentos. And actually, we have now the core reference libraries for these organisms available, publicly available in bold. And we have uh, developed a proof of concept study together with the Murdad and Shadi Shokrala uh, for metabarcoding of uh, estuarine bentos, and this has been already published. Uh, another uh, interesting contribution recent is this new uh, contribution from, uh, led by Pedro Beja is from an institution associated with the University of Porto, and they have been very active in the last uh, years. They have many collaborators uh, in different countries, and they are focusing, finally, on insects. These are the taxa they, they, they have worked up to now, but they are, will extend to other insect taxa, of course. And so far, according to their numbers, they already barcoded 2,400 species, insect species in Portugal, and their goal would be 5,000 species in 2020. So our numbers will surely change. Okay, um, as a third project, again, a collection of projects. These are projects underway or that uh, were just recently approved. We have a, a project focused on metabarcoding called NextC. We have one just recently approved about reference libraries and metabarcoding of non-indigenous uh, marine species. And uh, we have also a bioinformatics project that is still pending confirmation. So these are all projects led by, by University of Minho. We have multiple contributors to discriminate here. Uh, again, these numbers, uh, this is the total budget for NextSea. 
it's uh, only one third of it is for biological monitoring. The rest is for you know, electronic engineers to develop systems for monitoring in the marine environment. Uh, this is basically the maximum budget we can get in Portugal for a, for a research project. And uh, we'll see if we get the bioinformatics project. The, we are focusing on marine macroventus, also on uh, estuarine male fauna, and on non-indigenous marine species. So the goal of NEXT-C is really to develop autonomous multi-parameter monitoring stations for in-situ deployment. And attached to these stations, we will have uh, substrates for development of uh, basic communities. And we want to metabarcode those. And also, we have this uh, DNA-based monitoring plan for non-indigenous marine species in Portuguese ports and marinas, including also the islands, the archipelagos of Azores and Madeira. The SWOT analysis, our strengths, I, I believe, perhaps our accumulated experience and know-how. We have uh, a lot of newly trained and highly motivated early stage researchers also. And uh, there's, uh, according to my perception, a growing interest in the Portuguese community, especially after the emergence of the metabarcoding approaches. Uh, weaknesses, the instability of public funding, and uh, recently there was a big increase in the institutional bureaucracy, and this is really our major difficulty at the moment, is the bureaucracy, really. We have the funds, but we cannot use them. Um, opportunities, we have quite a number of them. Uh, an important one is that uh, in 2019 we have a supercomputer facility in our uh, facilities at the University of Ming. It's called MEC, Ming Advanced Computing Center. Actually, this is the supercomputer that was at the uh, University of Texas in Austin, and uh, there was an agreement of the Portuguese government to transfer this supercomputer to the University of Minho. So, uh, it's, uh, they will have a new, uh, a new, better one, but this is still a supercomputer, so uh, we think this would be a great opportunity. University of Minho is very keen to establish partnerships with IBOL, and this will be a good support for Bull, them, Brave, and other large scale analysis that we want to do. Uh, another big development is uh, we have a, at the University of Minho a new, a new institute, Institute for Biosustainability. It's a new building. We have new laboratories and new facilities so we can uh, improve our contribution to, to IBOL now. And uh, another important uh, opportunity is this Portuguese Genomics Consortium, Genome PT. Uh, which uh, at Dominio will have the bioinformatics node. And included in the bioinformatics node, there will be a training program in bioinformatics. And we can plan some workshops dedicated to training people in BOLD and uh, Embrave. So Portugal is very central in the Atlantic, and we have good connections from the airport of Porto, so this uh, could be a, a good place to um, develop these uh, workshops. And that's all. Thank you very much.